हेलो स्टूडेंट्स आई एम मनोज कुंडारे द असिस्टेंट प्रोफेसर ऑफ इलेक्ट्रॉनिक साइंस वेलकम बैक टू आवर ई लर्निंग प्लेटफॉर्म इन प्रीवियस वीडियो वी हैव सीन द कंसेप्ट ऑफ द वोल्टेज रेगुलेटर आईसीज सेवन एट सीरीज एंड सेवन नाइन सीरीज द लिंक ऑफ द प्रीवियस वीडियो इज अवेलेबल इन द डिस्क्रिप्शन बॉक्स प्लीज चेक इट नाउ इन दिस वीडियो वी आर गोइंग टू सी द कंसेप्ट ऑफ एस एम पी एस फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल वी हैव टू नो दैट वॉट इज मीन बाय एस एम पी एस द एस एम पी एस स्टैंड्स फॉर स्विच मोड पावर सप्लाय द एस एम पी एस इज डिफाइन एज वेन द पावर सप्लाय इज इंक्लूडेड विथ द स्विचिंग रेगुलेटर फ्रॉम द कन्वर्टिंग इलेक्ट्रिकल पावर फ्रॉम वन फॉर्म टू द अनदर फॉर्म विथ नेसेसरी कैरेक्टरिस्टिक्स इज कॉल्ड एज द स्विच मोड पावर सप्लाय वी हैव ऑलरेडी सीन द रेगुलेटेड पावर सप्लाय इन विच वी हैव सीन दैट देर आर नंबर ऑफ ब्लॉक्स सच एज ट्रांसफॉर्मर देन रेक्टिफायर देन फिल्टर एंड देन वोल्टेज रेगुलेटर एंड वी गेट द कॉन्स्टंट आउटपुट वोल्टेज हियर ओके इफ इन दिस पावर सप्लाय वी यूज ए स्विचिंग रेगुलेटर फॉर कन्वर्टिंग द वन फॉर्म ऑफ एनर्जी इन टू द अनदर फॉर्म देन वी कैन सी दैट the power supply is of the smps type or the switch mode power supply we have to understand here that here in this power supply the switching operation is done okay hence it is named as switching mode power supply this power supply is used to attain regulated dc output voltage from dc input voltage or unregulated ac voltage that means the input of the smps may be unregulated input that means ac or pulsated dc okay the output of this smps is the regulated form or it is a constant value okay i hope you all understand the basic idea about the smps now let's see the basic block diagram of the smps in this block diagram we can see here that there are number of blocks such as input rectified and filter high frequency converter for switching purpose output rectified and filter and the controlled circuit here we get the output of the smps and here we use the control circuit in the feedback path what is the function of each block let's see in details first of all the input stage this is the input stage the ac input supply signal 50 hertz is given directly to the rectifier and filter circuit combination without using any transformer that means the input supply of 50 hertz is given to the rectifier and the filter circuit we know that the rectifier is an electronic component which converts ac into dc but this dc is not pure dc this dc in the pulsated form hence to smooth this dc voltage we use a filter circuit the filter circuit removes the higher ripples from this pulsated dc and we get the smooth dc like this okay but the output of the filter is not in the form of pure dc like this okay i hope you all remember these things the output will have many variations and the capacitance value of the capacitor should be higher to handle input fluctuations this unregulated dc is given to the central switching section of smps that means the output of this rectifier and filter block is like in this form this is the unregulated dc and this is used as the input of the switching section of the smps let's see the working of the switching section a fast switching device such as a power transistor or a power mosfet is employed in this section which switches on and off according to the variations and this output is given to the primary of the transformer present in this section that means here 
there are two parts first one is a switching device such as the power transistor or mosfet is used and its output is given to the transformer okay which converts ac into ac we know all know that okay the transformer used here are much smaller and lighter ones unlike the ones used for 60 hertz supply these are much efficient and hence the power conservation ratio is higher okay that means in switching section there is a switching element like power transistor or mosfet and the output of the switching device is given to the trans transformer for the frequency changing or the frequency conversion purpose okay now the next block is the output stage the output signal from the switching section is again rectified and filtered to get the required dc voltage okay that means the output of the transformer is given to the again rectifier and the filter block to obtain the pure dc voltage this regulated output voltage which is then given to the control circuit which is in the feedback circuit that means here we can see that the control circuit is used in the feedback path that means this some part of the output is again feed back to the input of the switching element okay this is known as the feedback path the final output is obtained after considering the feedback signal now let's see here the details about the control circuit which is connected in the feedback path the control circuit this unit is a feedback circuit which has many sections let us have clear understanding about this from the following figure this is the cross section of the control circuit in which we can see here that there are number of electronic devices such as pwm that means pulse width modulated oscillator error amplifier isolation reference voltage and the output sensor let's see details about each one by one the above figure explains the inner parts of the control unit the output sensor that means this part senses the signal and joins it to the control unit the signal is isolated from the other section so that any sudden spikes should not affect the circuitry that means the output sensor senses the output that means the output from the circuit or the trans uh, filter is given to the output sensor the sensor senses the output and isolate for the isolation purpose we use the isolation block this isolation block prevents the major spikes or major current to flow from the other parts of the circuit hence we use the isolation block here the signal is isolated from the other section so that any sudden spike should not affect the circuitry a reference voltage that means this block is given as one input along with the signal to the error amplifier which is a comparator that compares the signal with required signal level okay that means this output of the isolation is compared with the reference voltage in the error amplifier block and basically the error amplifier is works as the comparator by controlling the chopping frequency the final voltage level is maintained this controlled this is controlled by comparing the inputs given to the error amplifier whose output helps to de decide whether to increase or decrease the chopping frequency the pdm pwm oscillator produces standard pwm wave fixed frequency okay this is the functional block diagram of the smps in which we can see that this is the input ac supply which is of 50 hertz this is of ac type and this ac supply is given to the rectifier that means to the rectifier and to the filter after rectifier and filter we get this waveform this is the unregulated dc waveform that means it contains some amount of ripple then this 
waveform or this voltage is given to the high frequency switching component which may be its power transistor or a mosfet the power transistor or the mosfet are used for the switching purpose and its output is given to the power transformer okay that means at the output of the switch we get this waveform like square wave that means we get here the on time and the off time of the switch like this the on time and off time causes a square wave here the square wave is given to the power transformer and again this is rectified and filter then we get here the pure dc or the regulated dc here the part of this dc is given to the error amplifier here the error amplifier compares the reference signal with this dc output voltage and given to the pwdm oscillator this oscillator then again connected with the switching device which may decide whether to switch or not this is the functional block diagram of the smps i hope you all understand the working of switching mode power supply now some important points are regarding to the smps are that smps circuit is operated by switching and hence the voltages varies continuously the switching device is operated in saturation or cut off mode that means the switching device means the power transistor or the mosfet are operated in the saturation region or in the cut off mode the output voltage is controlled by the switching time of the feedback circuitry the switching time is adjusted by adjusting the duty cycle the efficiency of smps is high because instead of dissipating excess power as heat it continuously switches its input to the control the output okay now let's see some disadvantages of the smps first one is the noise is present due to high frequency switching the circuit is complex and it produces electromagnetic interference these are the disadvantages of the smps let's see the advantages of the smps first one is the efficiency is high as 80 to 90% less heat generation that means less power wastage the reduction harmonic feedback into the supply mains the device is compact and small in size the manufacturing cost is reduced the provision for providing the required number of voltages these are the advantages of the smps now let's see the applications of the smps or the where we can use the smps there are many applications of the smps such as they are used in motherboard of the computers mobile phone chargers high voltage direct current measurements battery chargers central power distribution motor vehicles consumer electronics laptops security systems space stations etc that means there is a wide range of application of the switching mode power supply i hope you all understand the basic block diagram of the switching mode power supply thank you